Okay, right. So, so welcome again, everyone, to the LinkedIn Profile Optimization Masterclass. Let's get started without any further ado. So, uh, what we're going to talk about on this call is uh, why LinkedIn Profile Optimization is super important. Uh, who and who is it for? Why should you care about this? Why am I um, qualified to talk to you about this subject? Then we're going to get straight into the ten key focus areas and fifty top tips for your LinkedIn profile optimization. So those of you that registered, or uh, many of you have answered the question, I asked you one question, what would you like to achieve with your LinkedIn profile if you could wave a magic wand? And these were the answers. And as you can see, uh, you can see the commonalities. A lot of you are interested in generating more leads, getting more customers, getting more meetings, getting more business. And some of you are also interested in, in being better positioned as experts as well. But uh, generally, LinkedIn is there not so much for socializing and, uh, and engaging, but it's there for business. And that is what you want to use it for. And that is what I've used it for. It's what I uh, have my clients use it for. It's extremely powerful when you have your LinkedIn profile optimized and you then put it to good use to reach out and engage with your ideal prospects in your market. So here's the thing. There's a constant debate about websites and LinkedIn profiles. And I'd make a case that, frankly, if you were to ask me, what's more important to me? My business website, which is here on the left-hand side, it's a perfectly decent, fine website. But it really, have I got any business from that website? The answer is no. Where have I got a lot of business from instead? It's my LinkedIn profile. Because your LinkedIn profile is more important than your uh, than your website because people were, can tell a lot more about you. They are they want to know who you are, what you've done, what other people say about you, what's your expert expertise in a particular subject. And LinkedIn is the place where they will go and check you out. It's as simple as that. So listen, have both a website and an optimized LinkedIn profile, but I promise you that driving traffic to your LinkedIn profile, will generate more leads for you. All things being considered than driving traffic to your website. That I can, I can guarantee you. So why should you listen to me? Well, I have experience running offline businesses. This was an offline business I run with my wife uh, quite a few years ago now. I actually got my wife on national television and in national magazines um, because I optimized the website for our business. So I know a little bit about expert positioning. But this was a business that we only ran for a couple of years. And um, then I moved on to, to really becoming uh, an expert in helping people with their web marketing. And I started training people, uh, got a business partner, and I've trained thousands of people uh, over well, the last 10 to 12 years. Thousands of people I've trained one to many, spoke, spoken uh, at conferences, online, and uh, created uh, digital training programs, courses, masterminds, sold physical products, and just done all kinds of things, really uh, teaching people, especially here in the UK. But uh, in the last uh, three, three or so years, since 2018, I've been going solo and I've been running a, an agency, a sort of a, more of a boutique consultancy agency, working with um, clients privately helping them to grow their business and you can see on the screen here some of the results that uh, that um, I'm, I'm proud to say my clients have achieved so um, because LinkedIn is when you dial it in and you have a system behind it it can be incredibly powerful for generating business and you can see on the right hand side I share some of these stats just to show you that I have you know sent a lot of volume of connection requests messages and run campaigns for myself and for clients and generate a lot of leads. So where you see it says MRH engagements and, and RFMIs, these are active, actual leads, engaged leads for, for my clients. So I have a lot of experience. This is not based on theory. This masterclass is based on facts and based on experience. And a lot of the stuff I'll share with you is literally the stuff that I've learned from my personal experience as well as helping my clients. So in addition to the results, I've been on podcasts, especially in the last 12 months or so. I've grown a, a, a modest following on, on Twitter. And um, as a result of that and other things, I've been invited on to, as a guest on various podcasts. I've also interviewed CEOs of companies like Expandy, LinkedIn Automation Software, um, Sean Clark, CEO of High Level, 
uh, marketing uh, automation CRM system. And essentially, um, yeah, certainly have spoken with a lot of people, shared a lot of the knowledge of what we've agreed, of what uh, some of the things that I've done in my own business and with clients in these kind of public for forums. In addition to that, I've also created automated systems and IP. So you, you can see um, just a couple of examples of the systems that I've created uh, as well. So using LinkedIn, but taking leads and opportunities from, from LinkedIn, putting them into other automated systems to generate phone appointments and nurture opportunities for that uh, eventually turn into uh, appointments and, and business. Again, both for myself and for my clients. So that's all my experience. With that said, let's get into the Pearl and Dean moment where we're going to get straight into the masterclass. So without any further ado, uh, let me just go straight into the 10 key focus areas and the 50 top tips for your LinkedIn profile optimization. So we've got a lot of, uh, uh, we've got a lot of information I want to cover with you. All super important, but well, examples to share with you. But this, these are the top 10 areas you want to be focusing on for your LinkedIn profile. Your pro, number one, your profile photo. Number two, the headline. Number three is the header image. Number four is the about summary. Number five, the featured section. And then from six to 10, the experience section, skills and endorsements, recommendations, interesting groups, and then the account admin section as well. It's just got some important areas in there that we need to optimize. So let's get straight to it. And as I go along, I'll do my best to follow the chat. So if you have questions, I've got the chat open on the right hand side. And uh, let's, so I'll, I'll try and keep an eye on that, one eye on that as I'm going through the content. So if you do have questions, feel free to chat them away. So let's start with the profile photo. So the profile photo is very important. So you really want to have a quality profile pic, right? So you don't want to be using any low resolution cutouts from weddings, pictures of you when you are clearly in another external place that, that is not just a place of work or you're not, not just had a, a, a picture taken. The, the, the best way to do that is really to cut out your image Let's say you, you know, you in here, for example, is a picture of me speaking on stage. That's great because it positions me as an expert. But you, you can cut out that picture to, to get the background out. And then you can put a contrasting color in there, if you like, as well. The key thing is you want to have contrast. You don't have to have a crazy color like yellow or orange in the background. Just white as a background is great with your profile pic cut out on top of it, that really helps you stand out. But a, a common problem I see is when there's a picture of you and then there's maybe a brown background or a gray background and there's not enough contrast between your profile picture and the background. That's, a, that's an issue. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure there's enough of your of your profile, of your, of your head, shot, head and shoulders is fine, but you don't want to be doing full um, chest and upwards, or even worse, full body pictures. I mean, this is a tiny profile photo. So we, people really want to see your face. They want to see the whites of your eyes. Eye to eye contact is very important. So make sure that you, that you, 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 you know, people can see the whites of your eyes closely enough, because this is how we build trust with our prospects when they, when they come across our LinkedIn profile. And you don't have to be wearing business smart attire all the time. I don't have to have a suit and tie on, but please no, no hoodies. Like I've seen pictures of clients when they're wearing hoodies and, and it's just, you know, it's not the impression, right? The first impression matters. This is why you, you want to have something that represents you professionally. You don't have to have a professional photo. You can just take a, a simple picture with, a, with any smartphone that, that, that's decent these days will take a more than good enough picture for you. So, so, um, so don't worry, don't think you need the professional picture. Um, final thing is use the same profile pic across all of your different social accounts as much as possible because that builds identity and trust. When people see you in different places, then they'll, they'll just recognize you more. So for example, I use this profile picture on Twitter as well as LinkedIn, Instagram, other, other places as well. And it just builds that kind of trust. 
So that is the key area number one, the profile photo. Key area number two is the headline. So immediately below the profile, the headline is the 120 characters that we can that, that you can see here below my name. And traditionally, people will use that. And in fact, if you go to a LinkedIn conference, they will tell you to put your job title in there. I no, no kidding. That's exactly what they they say. I have clients that have been on, have paid to go to LinkedIn training sessions on how to optimize their profile and, and their LinkedIn outreach. And they'll say to put their job title in there because people want to see your job title. And that's just, just patently not, not the case. People don't really care about your job title. They, they're interested in you know, what's in it for them. As I always say, radio, WIIFM, what's in it for me. So get to the point already and show them how you can help them or make it clear why, you, why you're an expert. You're not necessarily an expert because of your job title. You're more likely going to be an expert for other reasons. So there's a couple of different ways that we can use the headline. The example you've got here is a, is a question. And, and funnily enough, this works really well. Asking people questions gets them to answer in their own mind. Are they interested? Is this something of relevance to them? If I could show you how to get more clients with LinkedIn and retain them longer with sales automation, would you be interested? That's a question that your prospect, if they're interested, they're kind of saying yes to, they're nodding, and then they'll kind of carry on, read the rest of your profile. And if they're responding to an outreach request of yours, they're much more likely to say yes, hit the uh, connection acceptance button and potentially respond to your message in that way. So questions can work. Um, the questions have to be easy to say yes to though. So closed questions typically, yes or no, and, and, and this is a qualifying process. So this is one thing you can do, especially if you're new, maybe don't have a lot of social proof or expert positioning yet, you can definitely ask a, a relevant question. And, and the key with questions, ideally you want to use, have specificity or some kind of numbers in there. It makes it more interesting. Uh, that's one thing that tip I, I like to use, as well as title case. So tip number eight here, using title case, which uh, in, enhances readability. It, much like headlines on sales letters do. So that's that's very important. I also like to put quotes around them as well. It's not necessary, but again, it's a, it's a direct response copywriting thing. It, it, uh, when it's in quotes, it's as if somebody said it and it therefore is more, more believable. However, the, the final um, tip here, tip 10, is all about enhancing your expert position. And it's what I currently use on my LinkedIn profile. So I, I, will, I have specific details of results that I've achieved with clients. So for example, uh, 1,597 tech B2B qualified leads generated on LinkedIn in 18 months. So that's a specific number. And, uh, and it's, uh, and it, again, the specificity gives you, um, makes it very believable. Uh, what it also shows is that you've got a lot of experience. I've got a lot of experience generating leads. Anybody can say, oh, I can generate leads for you. But how many people can actually say they've generated 1,597? No, there are probably people who generated a lot more than that, right? But that's not the point. The point is, it's real. It's believable. You now become unique in a, in a crowded marketplace of similar providers. So using those, those kind of results, and this is an advanced tip, but I would... I would say to all of you to try and come up with a number of the represents how, how many people you've helped in totality. So a couple of my clients are in the office, uh, the office designs space, and they've designed um, tens of millions of dollars worth of projects. So they've worked on tens of millions of dollars worth of projects. And that when you, when you add up the value of all those projects they've worked on, that's impressive. It's an impressive number. So certainly you want to be looking for opportunities like that to display your experience in a way that is, is engaging for people. We're not asking them a question, but we are impressing upon them that we are clearly an expert in this field. And that's super important. So let's keep going. So, So yeah, your question, Scott, about owning multiple companies. I'll, I'm going to come on to that uh, when we talk about experiences. It's a great question. 
so let's move forward then and again if you have questions i'm trying to monitor the chat so feel free to chat them away and i'll do my best to answer as many of them as i can so after key area number two the headline key area number three is the header image so this isn't as important as the profile pic but it is very important screen real estate that we should optimize. Uh, no, there are a number of ways we can do that. So I am a fan of using images to enhance your expert positioning. So for example, if you've spoken at an event, clearly you can see me here having speaking at an event. That's a shortcut immediately to being perceived as an expert. So a picture of, spe of someone speaking at an event, you want to use that all the time. Um, but obviously other media as well here, like you can see pictures of books. If you've published books, or even if you haven't, but you've got the books coming, use, use that, those images, put them on the profile, because again, it's a shortcut. If, you're, if you've written a book, you're immediately an expert. Um, the other thing you can do is you can use, uh, I, I like to use logos. So again, if you have clients that are marquee clients and you're, uh, and you're able to use their logos, then certainly putting the, their logos on there, even if this is the personal profile, this is where it, the personal profile crosses over with your business page you know, your, or your company page on LinkedIn. The reality is that nobody cares about a, a company page. All of the engagement happens on personal profiles. So although you are not your business necessarily, if you are looking to position yourself as an expert and you have worked with marquee clients via your, via your, via your business or clients people would know or are relevant to, to a specific industry, then you know, don't be shy about them. Put them on there because it will, it will only, again, immediately resonate with people that you have worked with clients such and such and therefore clearly are, are an expert in the field. Additionally, Putting a website on there, as you can see on my example, just may, means it's people are, don't make it difficult for people to know where to go to find out more about you, right? So putting a website on there, it hard um, kind of captioned into the image will drive more traffic to that website, especially if it's a short, easy to read, easy to, 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 to copy website URL. Final tip, tip number 15, is to remember to check how your profile looks on mobile because the vast majority of traffic will be people on mobile phones so sometimes you know, linkedin will will shift where it puts the profile picture so for example so rather than it being on the left sometimes it'll put it over into the middle so you just want to check where you know how that looks on mobile because the majority of people will be viewing your profile on a mobile device All right so let's keep rolling so that is key area number three the header image key area number four is the about summary now i know some of you had questions on the on the about summary so i have i've got a couple of slides here on on the about summary for you because it's very important um, really in order of importance your, your your picture your headline will be the most important and your about summary next in next most important after that but all, the, all three of those are vitally important your profile picture your headline your about summary the, the banner picture it's probably not as important although it is a, is a good opportunity to to portray yourself as an expert and share contact details etc on there but the about summary is important because this is where people really want to know who you are and what you do and they'll be judging you based on what you put in the about summary now, I always like to start my about summary. As you can see here, it says about what I do. So I'll talk a little bit more about the, 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 the little funny character and the what I do, the pre-head. But let's just focus on the content here. I help B2B businesses craft compelling messages, that generate leads and sales without advertising. So I call this the power statement. And I, I wrote a, a post about this to explain it. So the power statement is really explaining who you can help and how you can help them in one sentence. So for, there's, again, so the, there's an example here and there's a template. So I help ideal client achieve primary benefit one and primary benefit two without major pain points. So in this case, without advertising. And again, there may not, you may not have enough space for two benefits or, or one benefit may make sense, but if you can get more than one benefit in, that's good. Another way of doing this, though, is to 
to say I help ideal client achieve primary benefit one and two via my unique process. So rather than without a pain point, via my three-step process, my, via my four-step system, okay? If you have a, a unique proprietary approach for getting results, again, that's very compelling, very engaging. And again, you can also take this further by saying, uh, I help clients achieve primary benefit one and two so they can, and that can be a second level benefit. And this one is not, not entirely serious, but it, it follows the, the, uh, the template. So I help IT directors save time, money, and effort to find reliable, low-cost fiber connections so they can go golfing instead. So what's also important about the power statement, why do we put it up front? Because when people come to your LinkedIn about summary, they only see the top three lines before they have to click more. Here, in fact, is only the top, the top one line that I'm showing. So they have to make a decision at this point, do they click on the, the see more button? So you really need to hit them with a, with a strong, engaging message that makes them curious enough to want to click on that see more button and, and read the rest of your profile, your about summary. So if you make it crystal clear who you can help and how you can help in those first three lines, you will absolutely get more inquiries. That's why the power statement is super important. So Scott, yeah, with the summary, if you have more than one company, the thing about the, the, the summary, I'll, I'll go on to the next slide. Um, you can certainly mention in your summary if you, if you have more than one company. However, what is the most important company for you? What is the most important business that you want to promote? Typically, you want to focus on that. Again, in your experiences, I'll come on to, you can have more than one company that, that you represent and work for. But your about summary really should be your main focus. What are you mainly interested in? What are you looking to attract clients for, let's say? What is the primary uh, importance for you? So again, in some cases, you're, you're probably going to make a decision that one business is more important than the other. So you're going to write all about that in the about summary. And position yourself about that. And in other cases, may, you know, it may make sense to mention both in the about summary. Now, you can do that by using these preheads and, and make your about summary very modular. So rather than write a single net flowing narrative from start to finish, which is great, it's, it's a higher skill, and it's harder to do, but this approach here by using these preheads and caps, as I, hear, as I say here, to break up the content, it increases readability and allows you to mix and match and, and kind of chop and change between different topic ideas very, uh, very easily. So I, I have here what I do, that's the power statement. Then I say what others say. And in fact, in this example here, I'm using only testimonials in my about summary. This is tip 19. Um, because in this case, I, I have testimonials that actually explain what I do and also indicate the results that I've helped those people achieve at the same time. So it helps explain to people reading it, what are the things that I offer? What are the services I provide? It shows them the results and the outcomes that can be achieved. And it also gives social proof that there's other people saying that they've achieved these results, not me. So I'm a big fan of putting testimonials, especially when you have powerful ones, right up front in the about summary because well, we'll come on to recommendations later they're important but they are they are buried they are further down your linkedin profile page so you really want to make it easy for people to see your best most compelling social proof if you have it but if you don't have a lot of social proof yet for whatever reason that's fine again you can use the about summary to talk about the problems that you solve for your prospects in their market so what are the problems that they, that they have that they can identify with? For example, generating more leads. You know, do, are you, I, you know, does it, do you lie awake at night wondering how can I generate more leads and more qualified inquiries for my business, right? That's something that, is, that would be of relevance to someone for whom that's, uh, that's a problem, obviously. And if you, if you provide a solution to that, great. Now you can lead on and talk about how you provide that solution. Again, even if it's very early, even if you don't have case studies, so this modular approach of using um, to break up the content using preheads, it, it's also what Amazon does. Think about it. When you go and buy products on Amazon, they have um, the, the best 
product sellers have preheads in here and it leads the iPath in to read because we scan when we're reading digitally we're not reading like we would do offline in a book and we're going line by line down in sequence we're jumping up and down or whatever grabs our eyes and then we're going to read on so that's that's how that's why the preheads really work because they draw the eye path in also the unusual characters like the triangle here so which just leads the eye path into reading what you want them to read and then if they're interested they'll read on and, and, and carry on reading the rest so that's the about summary super important to to leverage this make it easy as possible for people to read and understand and um, avoid classic mistakes avoiding writing about yourself in the third person classic mistake this is not a resume although it is obviously used as a resume if you're if you're looking for work people will obviously be, be judging you in part by your linkedin profile but don't write it as a resume in the third person right this is personal this should come from you in the first person singular i because you are one person your profile so it should be i do this i do that and now i know you've got a company you've got a team i understand that but it's about you and your role within that team that people are interested in while they're reading about your profile. So first person singular, that's what you want to use. I in your about summary so that people understand that it's about you and, and not about your company or some or talking about yourself in the third person. Final step here. I'm a big fan of putting a call to action. What to do next? If you'd like to know more, just connect with me and I'll send you more details. At the bottom, if people have taken the time to read your, your, your full summary, let them know what to do next. And you could ask them if you wanted to, to, to call you, but it's a bigger ask to, to put your phone number in there or, or, or an email. I prefer to say, just connect with me on LinkedIn. If they're already on LinkedIn, it's super easy for them to connect and message me because now we can interact, we can chat. So that's, I, again, I like to make it as easy as possible for people to take the next step in starting and, and nurturing a relationship. Uh, with me. So that is the about summary. We spent a little bit more time on the on the first four because they're, they're, they're super important. So let's keep rolling through. So number five, featured. This is relatively recent that LinkedIn's introduced this and it is super important and it's often widely underused. You can actually have eight featured pieces of media in your in your featured section. And you can put all kinds of things in there. You can put links to websites, to, um, to videos, um, to, um, to PDFs, to blog posts, articles. And in, in this case, you see, I've, I've put a link to the event page here and also to some YouTube videos, uh, podcasts that, that uh, or interviews that I've done and that, and that I've been on. What's super important about this featured section is that the thumbnail, the thumbnail is super important. So you want to have an, a clearly optimized thumbnail so that it does, it just is interesting, it's engaging, and it positions you as, ex, as an expert. And then it kind of makes you want to, to click on it and, and, and spend more time checking out what these featured pieces of media are. So very, very important to showcase, for example, your best LinkedIn posts, because then people will see the social proof on those LinkedIn posts, um, IP or diagrams, slideshows, PDFs, books, podcasts, newsletters, all of those things are, are great to be able to share in here as well. But uh, as, I, as I say here in tip 25, that graphic thumbnail, super important, make sure that's really engaging and, and, and strong to maximize the value of your, of your featured media. All right, so... We've made it, it's officially half time. Okay, so we've covered focus area number one, the profile photo, the headline, the header image, the about summary, and the featured section. So we've got five more areas to go and uh, let's just crack on. And again, if you have time for, for more questions at the end, happy to do that, happy to answer those as they come in. So just keep, let me know. Yeah, so, Sean, your question, how do you suggest fixing the thumbnail issues from YouTube or Vimeo into LinkedIn? Trial and error, Sean, is really going to be the, 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 the best way to, to describe it. And, and um, I mean, thankfully, you know, YouTube, for example, I mean, if you're creating a thumbnail for a YouTube video, 
I mean, YouTube shows you what it looks like, and, and typically it comes across well, just natively brought by, by, by bringing that YouTube video into the features section. I haven't had to mess around with it too much, but you're going to have to do a bit of trial and error. That's, that's really the, uh, the only way I can, I can suggest um, to, um, to approach that. But it's, it's very important that that thumbnail is organized, is optimized. You don't want to have half of the content missing or, or, or so it's not clear what the, uh, what the media is about. Okay, so key area number six, experience. So Scott, especially for you, Experiences typically relate to specific business or job. If you do multiple things, create separate experiences to reflect them. Now you've got, I think I, think I didn't mention it, but for the about summary, I think it's 2,600 characters is the limit for the experience, for the about summary rather. And I think it's the same also for the, for the each experience. So there's actually quite a lot of characters that we can use in our experiences about summary. Most people, again, critically underutilize this area on their profile. So if you do have multiple businesses, follow the same process as for the about summary. Use the prehead in caps strategy. Use the unusual characters. And, and so again, make it easy for people to consume the content. Now you've got the opportunity to say things that maybe you couldn't say in the about summary. And in this case, if it's about a business, then make it more about the business, 100%. So talk about the business, the results, the clients, um, whatever is important about that business that you want to communicate. But, um, but don't just say the same thing clearly that's in your about summary. So, so consider this extra valuable real estate to put additional content and copy that will persuade and influence the reader of your profile. And don't be afraid also to use multiple experiences Experiences need to link to a, a, a LinkedIn page or a, a company, but a LinkedIn page doesn't have to be about companies. So you could have a LinkedIn page that's about a podcast. It could be about a newsletter. It could be about a LinkedIn group that you have. It could be about a book that you've written. So all of those things you can create pages for, and then you can create an experience related to those things. Again, I see very few people do that. But it, it, again, you don't want to overdo it. Obviously, if you've got five, 10 books and five or 10 different experiences, one for each book is probably overkill. So use your common sense. But you really want to showcase your best material, you, the, the, the best content, the best um, yeah, pieces of media and assets that you have created in your business that, that will engage with your ideal prospects. So experiences, super useful very important to to maximize and use as much space as possible and with good copy to in, to continue influencing persuading the reader as they are reading down your profile page again if in doubt how to write good copy use the aida formula tip 28 attention interest desire action just explain why your prospect should care about your business or service and tip 29 you can also use media so you can actually um Add media, as you can see here, there are thumbnail clips into the experience section. Just again, visually lifts the, the, the experience section as well. So similar to the about summary, the features section. So you can, you can definitely use media to, um, to just, just add that extra level of interest to your experiences. So that's key area number six, the experiences. So uh, Rahul, good. I'm glad you're getting, <laughs> I'm glad you like the information. Yeah, don't worry about taking notes. Um, we, you will get the PDF and then so you will get the copy of the recording as well. You like the experience section description. That's great. Yeah, no, it's very, very useful, very valuable. You can be a little bit playful around here as well, right? So I, I'm a big fan of using personality in copy as much as possible. So, you know, no outsourcing black hat tactics or cutting corners. It's, you know, if, if you're paying for results, a company doesn't deliver, why should you be forced to stick around? It's not the kind of stuff you're going to put on your website, is it? Let's be honest. But you can put it on your LinkedIn experience because it's more social. It's a little bit more friendly. It's a little bit more personal. You can, you know, you can take a few more risks You can take a few more chances with the copy on your, uh, on your social profile, perhaps compared to you, compared to your website copy. All right, so let's keep moving forward. So key area number seven, skills and endorsements. So skills and endorsements. 
super useful on LinkedIn for SEO optimization of your profile. Now you have up to 50 of these skills that you can include. And don't wait for people to suggest skills and endorsements. You need to be the person that is adding the skills onto your profile, changing them if they're no longer relevant. And so the skills you need to think about keywords. So what do you want your profile to be for LinkedIn to see your profile as relevant for? Because they will be looking at these skills and they will be making associations between these keywords and your and what you're about. And, and so very important to help LinkedIn understand what your what industry, what business, what services you provide. Like make it easy for them to kind of categorize you, and then they can they can put you in in places where uh, where your ideal clients are more likely to be. So. The, the key thing is three of these skills are always highlighted or, or can be highlighted at the top. So you want to have a couple of skills in there where you've got a, you know, some endorsements already. Now, endorsements, anybody can leave endorsements for, for anybody else. They are anonymous. They're, they're super easy. Um, you can go to groups. I know there are many groups you can, where you can get exchanges of endorsements. So you can you know, bump up the numbers that you have where people have endorsed you. Again, um, it's totally normal um, way to do that. Um, so, um, so yeah, so definitely take time to, to, um, to endorse, to, to get your endorsements up. One of the best ways to get your endorsements up will be to endorse other people because they're more likely to reciprocate and, and endorse you in return if you, if you endorse them. And, and again, there's other places you can go as well to, to, as I, as I said, to exchange endorsements. Make sure you avoid irrelevant keywords. So I see a lot of, so for example, I have a client who's a, who's a sales and marketing director, and he's put a lot of the sales related keywords in his profile. Now, what I said to him was, how important is it for your prospect that you are, you have skills in sales? Is it actually relevant for them? Because it's, it's actually not relevant at all to the service that he delivers. And actually, it's a distraction. It, it really it detracts from the skills you know, and, and the topics and the subjects that he should be focused on and having his clients see and his prospects see. So it's not about what you, you know, we're not looking to optimize our profile for our peers in the industry. Again, this is a common mistake, putting things in there that other people who are, who do the same job as you do, because you are one of them. Unless, you know, if you're looking to generate more leads and, and these, these people are not uh, prospects to give you money there is no point trying to do anything that would impress them or be relevant or relate to them focus 100 percent on what your prospects are interested in and that's going to generate a lot more responses and opportunities as a result i mean it seems obvious but it's surprising how many times these keywords are not optimized they have with irrelevant keywords and the and the top skills the top keywords are not featured in in the way that they should So, so Scott, um, your question about creator mode on or off. Yes, um, I am personally not a fan of creator mode because I, when, you, when, you, uh, when you turn on creator mode, it then encourages people to follow you rather than connect with you. And I want people to connect with me as much as possible. Connections are super important, super valuable because obviously you can message directly your connections at any time. So I'm not so much a fan of creator mode for that reason. Um, I think creator mode might suit people who they really produce a lot of content and you really have a lot of followers, then I think creator mode could be a benefit for you, but that's really not most people. So that's my thoughts about creator mode. Right, let's keep going. So key area number eight, recommendations. Now we've touched upon recommendations already. They are hugely important. And all equally, like many other parts of LinkedIn profiles, they are critically undervalued and under optimized so you do you need to do whatever it takes to get recommendations you, you want to prioritize getting those recommendations from past and current clients right this is your very best social proof on linkedin it's going to be less relevant to have recommendations from your previous you know boss if you when you're in employment if you're now running your own business now if you are Looking for a, if you if you are still an employee, then it's going to be very relevant to have recommendations from previous bosses and, and employers. So it, it it obviously depends on your situation. But assuming you're running a business, 
or you're looking to grow a business from via your LinkedIn profile, get clients, get your clients to leave recommendations. It's amazing how many people are not even connected on LinkedIn with their clients. It amazes me. Um, it amazes me. So you need to be connected, directly connected with all of your clients. Once, the, once you are directly connected and only once you're directly connected, can you send them a message and ask them to give you a recommendation? So if you're not connected with them, a level one connection, a direct connection, you can't message them and ask you to leave a recommendation. So, so um, yeah, very important that you connect with your clients, then reach out to the master recommendations. And, and if necessary, say you're working with someone that's helping you with your marketing and they say it's important, you need to get some more recommendations, blame them if necessary, but get those recommendations because people read recommendations. I, I guarantee you, they are very important. I mean, I use recommendations all the time in, let's say, in, in conversations with, uh, with prospects. And let's just say somebody might ask, well, can I speak to some of your clients? Or I'll say, well, my clients are busy. I don't like to bother them and have them speak to people if, you know, who, who, are, who are interested in working with me. Here's what you should do instead. Go to my LinkedIn profile, look at my recommendations. You can see I have more than 30. And that's exactly what they would say to you if you were to speak to them anyway. And nobody has any issues with that. So these are public statements about from clients, people who've worked with you, about their experience of working with you. And it really overcomes any need to, to have to speak with your clients or, or something similar to that, which is obviously a roadblock, a delay to moving forward in an engagement process. So very important to get those recommendations. If you give recommendations to others, again, you're more likely to get those recommendations back. That's, and that's another, again, using Cialdini's law of reciprocity. Um, Robert Cialdini, author of the book, Influence, and Influence Psychology and Persuasion, very important. And, um, and also when you do ask for recommendations, if people are not sure how, what, how to say, just give them this before and after structure. So before I worked with James, I was in the situation after working with James. Now I'm, I'm here instead. And that, that before and after scenario is very simple. Most people can kind of work with that. And that is really what your prospect wants to see. What's the impact that, that working with you or working with your organization has had? Final thing I'll say on this is screenshots. Take lots of screenshots of your recommendations. You should be using those screenshots all across your media. Put them on your website. Put them in your proposal documents, right? Virtually nobody does this. So at the end of every proposal, if I ever send one out, you know, I'm going to have three, four, five pages of screenshots of testimonials. And you better believe they get read. So you need to use these, this social proof like in lots of different places. It's, it's very, very powerful. Um, Scott, yeah, I'm glad you like the before and after recommendation model. Yes, that works really well as a very simple testimonial form, formula, not just for recommendations, for video testimonials, um, because people struggle. They struggle with knowing what to say when, when you ask them to give a recommendation or, or a testimonial. So you have to help them, help them, make it easy for them, right? Not hard, because they're doing you the favor at the end of the day. So Travis says, so um, looking at the questions, client writes recommendation two years ago, still a client fan, can they update it? Yes, they can update it. They can update their recommendation 100%, no problem with that. Travis asks, is it socially acceptable to take these recommendations on LinkedIn and use them as testimonials on your website? Is it socially acceptable? I've got no issue with that. I mean, why not? It's, it's a public recommendation on a LinkedIn page. Um, yes, you have to be logged in to, 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 do you have to be logged in to see it? It kind of depends actually, doesn't it? I'm not even sure whether, whether you need to be logged in to even see the recommendations it might depend, but I've got no issue with it. As far as I'm concerned, it's a public statement in the public domain that, um, that someone has given you. So yes, why not use it on your, on your website? Is it okay to use their profile pic or is that taboo too? Again, if you ask for permission, why not? Absolutely. Why not? If you're not sure, ask them, put them on your website, then check your client is comfortable with it. You know, that's, uh, but you need to be doing this. Like most businesses drastically underuse social proof in their engagement and influence and persuasion process, especially on websites. Websites are dry and drab. Typically they don't have, what we all want to see is what other people say about us because nobody really believes what we say about ourselves, because obviously we, they think, you know, we're going to, of course, we'll say that about us. But what do others say? When you have it, it's very powerful. Use it everywhere. 
if you do one thing from this masterclass and you get more recommendations and you put them in more places where people, you know, on your website and, and, and put in your profile, I promise you that will pay off for you. All right, let's keep rolling forward. So key area number nine, interest in groups. So not as important as some of the areas, but again, we still want to optimize our profile. If you've done interesting stuff, you've won awards, you speak languages, you've taken courses, certainly put them on your, in your accomplishments. No, no harm, no foul in doing that whatsoever. It's another place to put your publications as well. So again, if you've got books, podcasts, newsletters, you can put them in your, in your interest. You can add them to all kinds of different, oh, sorry, accomplishments, There's all kinds of different things you can use in accomplishments. And again, utilize that, that space to position yourself as an expert. When it comes to interests, I'm, I'm particularly interested in, the, in, the, in, in groups, I've got to say, and, and, using ice, in, and using the interest of your prospects in icebreakers. So, for example, I see you also follow, follow, follow Tony Robbins. So let's just say, you know, people often struggle once you've connected. What do I say? Well, how do I break the ice further? How do I start a conversation? If you go and look at their profile. Go and see their interests. Go and see the groups they're members of. See if you can find some commonality. Have a look at their accomplishments and then make a reference to that. What does it do? It shows that you've taken the time to go and read their profile and you've made and you've found something and you're making an intelligent comment, hopefully, about something on their profile. They're going to be impressed. That's going to be one of the best icebreakers that you can ever do in your engagement strategy with your prospect. So I, I guess this is more about interest in groups for your prospects if you're looking to engage them, but you'd certainly want to, to um, be to, to show that you're interested in relevant uh, influencers, businesses for, for your industry, and also groups. Groups are great because your ideal prospects hang out where your groups are. And this is something I use all the time. If I'm looking for prospects, I'm going to bring up a, a potential prospect. I'm going to look what groups are they a member of. And oftentimes you'll find all kinds of unusual groups where your prospects are at and then you go and look in that group and you go and join that group and now you're in a, a group with prospects just like the 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 avatar you're just looking at the person you're just looking at the profile so groups are a gold mine to find other avatars other people that are similar personas to the to the to your ideal prospect that you're looking to reach out to so key area number number nine interest and groups now, finally, last, and I say not least because some of this stuff is really important. Your account admin area, it's not really your profile optim optimization, but some of it is very important. First of all, here, 45, you want to make sure you grab a custom URL for your LinkedIn profile. So, so you want to make sure your profile reads linkedin.com, for slash in, for slash James A. Watson, not the standard one that LinkedIn gives you with a bunch of numbers at the end of it. OK, again, very important. Many of you probably already have this done, but it's still surprising how many don't. And, and so this is called a custom URL. It also he helps to build up. It boosts your uh, the experts, perceived expert positioning and the quality of your profile as well, because LinkedIn is, is judging you on how well optimized your profile is. So very important. Every single person should have a custom URL. Uh, that's as close as possible to your name. Sometimes people put keywords in, that's optional, but, um, but I li I'd like to put the name in first. Also important, make sure your profile is set to public so anyone can see who you are and what you do. Like your LinkedIn profile is a sales landing page, not a private Facebook profile. So make, so again, so make sure that your profile's public is, is visibility is on, because otherwise you, you see half the information hidden. If you are not, um, if you're not, if your profile is not public and, and LinkedIn profiles get indexed in Google as well. So if you've got relevant keywords, you might be appearing in searches, but people won't be able to see your profile unless they're logged in. So that is, uh, so that's super important to, to make sure that your full profile, pub, uh, your full profile is publicly visible. Okay, 47. Contact settings, make sure you put all the links to your websites and where people can communicate with you. Again, many times I see out of date communicate out of date website links, they, you know, dead ends, um, outdated information. Make sure that you've got 
current actual contact information in there so people can reach out to you um, successfully. You want to make sure you've got a phone number. And again, probably most of you have a phone number, but if you don't, add a phone number. LinkedIn likes it. It gives more confidence in the security and the authority of your account. You don't have to share it with people publicly, but just for LinkedIn's perspective, that helps the account security. I would also recommend using a dedicated non-core email for your main LinkedIn address. So for example, I might use James at moreresultsmarketing.co rather than .com. Why? Because that way you know the people that have taken your email and they've added them into email lists and starting email yeah, and, and, and they're emailing you now. So you know that they've got that information from LinkedIn and it just separates out the, uh, the noise, I guess, from, from people that, that reach out to you via your LinkedIn email versus your main business profile uh, email. Final thing is super important, number 50, you can download, how often how do you download all of your LinkedIn profile connections and classify them and, and sort them and prioritize them? Who are your ideal partners? Who are your strategic partners? Create a plan for how you're going to engage these people. Like LinkedIn gives you the ability to download your profile connections. And if you've got profile connections of, you know, from, from different people, different times of life, you know, it's very, very valuable to therefore take that list and say, okay, I want to work with these people. These are the people that are my prospects. I'm going to have a plan to reach out to them and engage them. So these are all of the things that you can do with your LinkedIn profile and a lot more. Let's just sum up all of the 10 areas to focus on. Because if you're going to, if you're going to optimize your profile, these are the 10 most important areas I'd recommend. Your profile photo, the headline, the header image, the about summary, the featured section, the experience section, skills and endorsements, recommendations, interest in groups, and then last but not least, the account admin section. So those are the 10 key focus areas, 50 top tips for your LinkedIn profile optimization. Uh, do you have any questions? Please type the, chat, the questions into the chat. Happy to take a couple of minutes and answer your questions. So Travis says, if you just create a LinkedIn profile of zero connections, who should you reach out to first? Great question. So if you have zero connections, who should you reach out to? A couple of options. Um, so if this is a brand new profile and not a duplicate profile, two different use cases. I don't recommend creating duplicate profiles necessarily. Um, then, well, first of all, reach out to anybody, anybody at all. It doesn't matter, especially people who know you. So existing business connections, uh, colleagues, um, employees, um, that's, one, that's certainly one place to start. You can also search for people that have a LinkedIn open networker badges and on, on their profile, LION. You might see the acronym L.I.O.N on people's profiles. That means they're an open networker. So they're very open to connecting with, with people. So again, do a search in LinkedIn, find some LIONS and send connection requests to them. They're not going to say, I don't know, and, and potentially cause any issues. That's another way. The third way, recruiters. Recruiters accept everyone. So, so just find some recruiters and reach out to them, especially if you're in a relevant industry. They might think you're looking for a job, but that's okay. You're just, you know, you're, you're looking to, to, to grow some connections. So those are three ways to grow your connections if you don't have any at all. Uh, is there a way to turn on the line status? No, you just put it in your profile. Like you might put it after your name. Um, that's what people do, Audrey. So... Yeah, Lamar, great question. How do you start sales conversations with your connections? Great, great, great question. Uh, it goes a little bit beyond the scope of this masterclass, which is specifically about LinkedIn profile optimization. But obviously, once you have a, a, an optimized profile, now it's time to reach out to your ideal prospects and, and, and drive them to your profile, try and connect with them and then message them. And even if you send in mails, like people will, will check out your profile, it's now optimized. You're gonna get a more positive first impression from that person. So if you, um, so if you would like some help in this area, either you would like some help to, for someone to look at your, your LinkedIn profile and help you with the optimization of it, or if and or if you'd like some help with how to reach out to people once you've got a, a, a an optimized profile and so what kind of outreach strategy should you use 
who, you know, who to target, how should you engage them, what kind of automation tools should you use. If you have questions around those areas, then I suggest take advantage of, uh, of this special masterclass offer for you. If you go to connectedclients.co forward slash consulting, I do offer one hour consulting sessions. And, and if you go to this link, you can see, again, the page is full of social proof of people. I've done more than 50, probably closer to 70 individual paid consulting sessions just in, in this year alone. And you can see feedback from a lot of those people on that page. So again, if you're looking for help in this area or any other area, feel free to reach out, book a consulting session. If there's a project that I, uh, it makes sense for me to help you on afterwards, I'd be happy to credit your investment in the consulting against our future working project. But for most people, they get a ton of value just from a single hour's consulting as well. I also record that call for you too. And, um, and that's it. Yep. <laughs> Michael says, thank you, Michael. Uh, it's, it's giving me a testimonial in here. I appreciate that, Michael. Uh, thank you, Travis. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Garrison. Um, so final thing is if you're not already on my email list, you should be my virtue of having signed up for this masterclass, but, uh, my, my secret email list, if you like, is at connectedclients.co. So please go there and sign up if you haven't already. And, um, two things, follow me on Twitter. If you're active at all on Twitter, you'll find me at underscore LinkedIn or at LinkedIn underscore King. And, and I post regularly on there, share all kinds of insights and tips. Um, so feel free to follow me and definitely, definitely, definitely make sure you ha have reached out and connected with me and we're directly connected on LinkedIn. That would be super important too. So we have multiple channels of communication because I will be doing other masterclasses in the future. I'd be super interested in your feedback on other topics you'd like to see a masterclass on, as well as your feedback about this particular masterclass as well. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, final chance to ask questions. <laughs> and also, can you give me your feedback in the chat? Um, give me, um, give me a, a number out of 10 for value from this masterclass. So where one is the lowest, 10 is the highest, give me a number in the chat, please. Uh, that will just um, help me understand how well I've done and how, uh, and again, if there's areas that I can improve, let me know. Certainly I could get more familiar with using Zoom. I think we'll be using um, probably a webinar version of Zoom next time. So thanks so much for the positive feedback, guys. I'm seeing lots of 10s, uh, one more than 10. That's awesome. Thank you, Joanne, uh, Adam, Harish. Gary, Simon, Joanne, I can't mention everyone. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate the feedback. So what I am going to do right now, I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to stop the recording. I'll get that rendered and uh, uploaded and sent out to all of you guys on email. Um, most likely by tomorrow, by Friday now, as it's in the evening here in the UK time. But thanks so much for everyone. And again, if I can help in any way, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. In, in any way I can optimize your LinkedIn profile or with your outreach campaigns itself. So, um, so David, what can be expected in the consulting call? Uh, if you go onto that page, connectedclients.co forward slash consulting, you'll see lots of examples of people who've been through the call. So they'll tell you what they were expecting and what the reality was. So spend a bit of time on that page, read what other people say about it. If you've got questions, there's a little um, chat widget on the page. You can reach out to me there, send me a message. I'd be happy to answer any questions you've got on the, on the, about the consulting call. Right, I will wrap up here. Thanks everyone for hanging with me. Thank you, Tracy, uh, Audrey, uh, Jameson. Appreciate that so much. Thanks, thanks uh, guys. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you again, maybe in the future for another masterclass. Thanks so much. Take care.